In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform some old pots into decoupage or works of art. Actually, what I meant to say is I'm going to transform this pot with some blue and white paint to create a toile effect. The first thing I'm going to do is to paint them with white chalk paint. Before we get on with the video, if you don't know me, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Stud, the online flower arranging classes. I've got a really great Facebook group, so if you do like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Also hop along to my Facebook group. Again, I'll leave the details in the show notes underneath my video. So I don't know whether you know anything about chalk paint. I am new to chalk paint, so if you do know anything about it, please do give me some advice. Shabby chic chalk based furniture paint. I'm wondering whether that now is the key to where my problems are going to come. You can see I haven't got any furniture but I thought I would give it a go so do let me know if you've got any advice. So I've got a variety of things here that I thought oh wouldn't it be easy to chalk paint. I see people doing this on YouTube all the time and um, it just looks always looks so easy, doesn't it, when you see someone else doing it? Then found this, no, I don't find, I picked this barrel up from, um, somebody was giving some stuff away from their front door. So I picked this up and it's got this quite nice label on it. But I can't work out, I can't feel that there's anything for me to pull off as being a label there. And then with a little knob as well. So my idea is I'm going to paint these white. Shall we try the metal as that's um, different? So perhaps before I start, should I try and remove these tags? If I take the screw off this, the lid, So I'm just going to put part screw the screw back in so I don't lose it. Put that there for later and then paint on the top here. Let's see how this goes. Actually, while I'm going to do that, I'm going to get um, a washing bowl and just soak my label off. So if I put that in the washing up bowl, that should soak off while I'm doing the next. So here we go again, a little bit of paint. How well does it work on the metal? Seems to be working okay on the metal as well. Oh gosh, I am pleasantly surprised. I'd always thought that chalk paint was some kind of miracle paint that didn't need any prep and would cover all in one coat, but that's not the case. So here I am the following morning adding my second coat of chalk paint to the lid of my biscuit barrel. It didn't take long for the label at the bottom of my biscuit barrel to soak off in my washing up bowl full of water, but I'm left with a sticky residue. So what I like to do is to use a little bit of surgical spirit or you could use white spirit to just take away that gunkiness. So you've got a nice clean flat surface ready for your paint. I'm then going to use my floristry scissors, they're just so handy, using those to lever open my can of paint. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush that I used yesterday. This is a special chalk paint brush. And um, because I didn't want to wash it overnight, I've wrapped it up in a piece of cling film. So it's all set to go without me having to wash it up again. And um, I'm putting the paint over. And this time, of course, I know that I need more than one coat. So I'm just getting the coat on and then I will add in a second coat. And I think this must be the day after that, or at least later on that afternoon. So I have painted up this barrel with chalk paint. And the idea was that I was going to use some of my prints from IOD, my stamping sets from IOD, the Iron Orchid Designs, to create a sort of um, a toile look. Toil, toile, toile. So it looked like wallpaper across the front of it. So, um, here goes really. So I'm going to prop that up, prop that up there, and just dobbing some out like that. And then I have never done this before, so I understand that I need to wet the paint, wet the paint a little bit and mush it around. 
I'm going to take my stamps. They're like jelly. So that's the raised edge there. And add my paint. And then before I add it onto my container, I'm going to spray the container with water because I'm trying to create a sort of smudged look, for want of a better word, a sort of aged and weathered look that's nice and wet. I'm putting my stamp down and I'm not worrying whether it bleeds and moves. I just want a hint of a background colour, so it's not just black on the blue and white. It's got all the shades of texture as well. Ooh. Perhaps that was too much paint. So I'm going to dab that off and blend. So it means my background. I'm not painting onto a background that's totally white. Actually, I think that was probably the look I was after. I'll transfer some of that paint on the back Just to do it again on the back as well. This is just to get the paint on there. In fact, I think I might take a little bit of the paint off there. Add my design back on. Holding it in place. I'm trying to go for a top coat of the print. Like that. Which I reckon is the look. I'm going off. I don't know why I sound so surprised. And then moving it around a little bit. That's just a tiny bit of paint. light and shade might come in for a second go this way around pretty good effect isn't it Smudge it too much as I go around. I haven't got time to put another piece down there without smudging. So a little bit more of the paint. And every time I put the stamp down, I'm just repositioning it so it doesn't always sit in the same position. lot of white there so I might do this twice once so I can blot and then for real actually that's my best one so far and I'm going to blot it I might leave it like that actually 
actually. Quite like that. This one I think has got too much paint on it. I'll dampen that down a little bit. And then think about layering other bits of the stencil on top so there's lettering as well. What I might do is, as I've got the big one out, I might do a stencil on here as well. So I'm going to have it slightly offset. some wording but we're going to work on exactly the same principle of loading up my brayer on the text I might just offload some of the paint just so it's not too squelchy and then Looking good, I like this. And not to be too obvious. Just because I can doesn't mean I should. So that one was over there. I'm going to go across on this other side. to do next I'm going to let that dry and then take off the masking tape that was um, sealing the top of the tin and then I've got a little wooden stopper that came off the top I think I'm going to paint that blue and then I'll have a container for keeping my flower food in perhaps even for using this bottom bit to use as a vase I love this technique so much I thought I'd have a go on another vase and as you can see here I'm using exactly the same stamp from IOD and I'm mixing up a range of pinkish colours and layering them on top of each other. It's worked out really really well. The only difference here is I was instead of using my brayer I was using my chalk brush. I'm not quite sure why I did that but both techniques worked really really well. To add some extra definition and contrast, I went back in with a slightly different colour paint that I mixed up to add in some wording. And as I switch the vase round, you'll see that I also did some decoupage as well. And I'll link the video for that with the same technique when I use the same rose decoupage papers in the show notes underneath the video and also in the cards up above. Working with the pink theme, I use this container to display some of my artificial peonies. It really does make you believe the peony season lasts much longer than it really does. And if you want to know how to arrange fresh peonies from your garden or your florist shop, check out the video in the cards up above and I've also linked it in the show notes underneath this video. And here's my finished blue 
toil effect on my biscuit barrel. I have been using it to store flower food, but I thought you might like to see how you can also use it as a vase. So if you're trying this project at home, don't forget to make sure whichever container you use is actually watertight, otherwise you'll end up with spillages. When you're thinking of styling a vase of flowers at home, sometimes it's nice to add some extra bits and bobs around it so it doesn't look so lonely. Here I've got a green vintage tray and I'm going to add an extra few details with it and just sort of crossing over into that very trendy cottage core on granny chic look. So which did you prefer, the pink or the blue? Do let me know in the comments underneath the video. And if you're interested in sourcing the supplies that I use, the brayer, my chalk paint brushes and my two kinds of chalk paint. I'll leave details of these in the show notes underneath the video. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. It really does help my channel grow. That's all for me for now and I'll see you next time.